Hello Makeup Void, I'm the Makeup Schizophrenic and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is my goal on the internet to reduce the stigma against schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder by talking about relatively normal things and today we are talking about my phone going off which is the Teresa is Lethal palette by Teresa is Dead and Lethal Cosmetics. So I have some thoughts, I have some reviews going and I also want to compare it to the Lethal is Dead palette. This is the last look that I did. I did a combination of these two palettes. So let's go ahead and get rolling in before we do give this video a like and subscribe I do upload three days a week Sundays Tuesdays and Thursdays and Thursdays are always my will I buy a video So stay tuned. Let's get rolling All right, so I do want to make it clear that this is called a pressed pigment palette So it does have some shades with probably carmine in it Which is why it has to be labeled a pressed pigment palette But when you get the palette up or it's pressed powder palette is how they call it So when you get it, it's just in a nice little sleeve that looks exactly like the outside It's just the sleeve has like the ingredients on it as well as um, just like their website and that it's made in Berlin. I really like Lethal because it is a German based brand and I took German in high school or not high school in college for like two and a half years. So I'm always like German everything, let's do it. So Teresa is Lethal. This is the palette in all its glory. So this palette was based on horror films. This one is based on space. So you have the little don't look up is what it says in the mirror. And you have nine shades, obviously. You have a nice variety from light tones to a nice dark rich tones. I will say about this palette, I filmed a video swatching all of my lethal single shadows and when I was gravitating towards those, I noticed the shadows, they were soft, they were creamy, like the metallics were really well done and the, the mattes were just so soft and buttery, like I noticed that intensely and so when I swatched this palette, I was very surprised. Plutonian and Specimen 3, the dark purple and the dark teal, they are very, very dry. And when it comes to the Lethal is Dead palette, when I was using it today, I noticed that one um, was it Vengeful Spirit and the Final Girl were also pretty dry. And I don't get that out of their singles. So I just wanted to take note of that. I should be showing you swatches of both the palettes combined now. And in case I don't, then here we are. Um, I should be swatch I should be having a video swatching both shadows next to me at this point. And in the uh Teresa is in the new palette, in the new palette, Teresa is lethal. So you have six mattes and six metallics. So you have Space Trash, Hive Mind, and TV Dinner. When I was doing the looks, I feel like you don't need a glitter primer for Space Trash or Hive Mind. I did use a glitter primer with today's look for that. But with TV Dinner, when I try to do these three different looks, I try to use my finger on one of them, I try to use a brush, just a brush with a little bit of water or setting spray on one of them, and I like to use a glitter primer as well. And for the look I did with TV dinner, which you will see, I just used my finger, and that was a disaster. <laughs> that was a huge, huge disaster. Bad decisions were made. This, in words of Teresa, Glitter, glitter Bukaki, okay, all over this shade. It is a beautiful, beautiful silver, okay? Stunning, but the glitter fallout is so real, my goodness. And I, just looking at both the palettes, people were complaining that they look similar. I don't feel that way at all. I think they complement each other wonderfully. You have the nice greens and the blues in this palette and then you have uh, what is it called? Specimen 3 and um, Venus Envy in this palette. So I feel like these palettes complement each other very well. I don't think she duped themselves. I think she just made a nice complementary palette and I will say with this palette I use all nine shades in all the looks but i will say area 52 this kind of like toby brown shade 
hard pass. I will not be using that shadow again. So for me, I only have like eight workable shadows in this Clorac palette. And when I used Area 52, it just made Specimen 3 and Plutonian look muddy. They weren't as intense. It just didn't look good. But I had to use Area 52 somehow. And it just... It wasn't good. It wasn't good. I think the formula of the shadow is fine. I just hate the tone. It's very light, very light, not very pigmented. So it'd be nice for very soft, easy looks. I can see it being beneficial for that. But for me and the way I do my makeup, it's not beneficial. It's a throwaway shade. Now something I did want to do is swat a couple other silvers in my collection, which I totally forgot about. So let me move around and do that. Let's compare silvers. So the first silver I'm going to compare is from the BH Cosmetics Fuck Off palette. <laughs> Not my favorite palette, okay? Not a favorite. But they have the shade IDGAF in here. And so we're going to give this a swatch. Very creamy shadow. Very nice. And this is a pretty silver. I think if this is the only silver in your collection, you won't be disappointed with it. It does have a nice sheen. It's very soft, but it's like a basic silver. Just pretty basic. Going in next into my BH, not my BH, my Beauty Bay Dark Fantasy palette. I really wish I had more time to play with this palette this month because it's gorgeous. But I'm going to go into the shade... Actually, Code and Grime look pretty similar. Yeah, let's watch both of them. So we have Chrome. Yeah, is that? No, Code. My apologies. Code, which is a little bit on the sheer side and pretty chunky. Let's give this a nice swatch. Definitely lighter than IDGAF, but again, you have that nice sheen. And then let's also swatch Grime, which is kind of a darker silver. Yes, 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 look at that one. It's a little bit of a messier swatch, but yes, yes, now that's a damn good silver. Ugh, those are good silvers, but let's see how it stacks up with my other ones. And of course, the biggest comparison I have to do is with Lethal's own single silver. I will... <laughs> I don't know when the video is going up. I was doing a really good job filming last weekend. So I don't actually, I can't actually pop this one off. So their single silver is called Rocket Fuel. So let's compare that. Not, it's soft, but it kind of looks like IDGAF. I mean, it's a pretty silver, don't get me wrong, but there's their Rocket Feel shadow, a lot of different tones in here, but still silvers nonetheless. And now let's go into TV dinner, which I'm a little dreading because it's a little heavy chunky. Okay, I have silver all over my hands. Yes, okay, yes. Despite the glitter, bukkake, glitter bean everywhere, yeah. That's the best silver in my collection. I mean, all these all these sil sil silvers, all of these silvers look really good, but TV Dinner pretty much stands out. It's also lighter. It's really close to Code from the Dark Fantasy palette. Rocket Fuel is a little bit deeper silver. This is kind of more of a taupey silver. This one's kind of a darker one as well, and that's TV Dinner. Very, very pretty, very sparkly. So, if you don't mind Claire Bukaki, <laughs> then the TV dinner is going to be the one for you. But I think the other silvers I just watched aren't bad. It's just TV dinner is just that much more reflection, reflecting. And I like it. So TV dinner is definitely a stand out. Wow, that's pretty. And I'm getting glitter everywhere. <laughs> My hand was covered in hair dye this morning and now it's hair covered in glitter. Oh, goodness. Okay. I'm going to have glitter all over my hand all day. There's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing. It's coated in glitter. I knew that was coming. I knew. So those are just comparisons about other silvers in my collection. If you're like, I like the palette. Is the silver really worth it? 
I kind of think it is, but if you're also like, Dark Fantasy Palette has a few good damn good silvers in that too, so my my review of this palette is basically it's a really nice palette it's a little weird that some of the shadows are really dry compared to lethal singles but like I didn't have that issue with Venus Envy and I didn't have that issue with Pew Pew as well as Space Duster those are all pretty creamy shadows it was just Plutonium and Specimen 3 that were on the dry side and I noticed that as well as with the Lethal is Dead palette that some of the mattes were a little dry which is after swatching all of my Lethal sh singles it was just not what I expected to be it was just like really different and strange that they were just so dry and I didn't expect that. In terms of quality of the wear time of the shadows, they last beautifully. When I do my makeup in the mornings before work, I don't do I don't do a full face of makeup. I don't do any foundation, concealer, powder. I don't do all of this. I only do a full face of makeup on the weekends. And so when I put shadows on the lower lash line before I go to work, that is the true testing power. Can these really last the day without any primer, any concealer, nothing. Can they last on their own? And they do. The lasting power is great. I used Venus Envy like just a little bit in one of the looks and it wasn't prominent but when I was talking to co-workers that middle look, the one the Thursday look was when I got a lot of compliments on and a co-worker po pointed out that she really liked the green underneath the lower lash line. So it was prominent, it was still being seen, I didn't have any issues with our time whatsoever. They all lasted beautifully. So that's a good thing to keep note of and I, I really enjoy this palette. I wish I had more time to play with it, I wish I could do more looks with it, but... <laughs> I just got a palette in the mail yesterday, one's being delivered today, I haven't used the Beauty Bay palette only two times, I was, I feel overwhelmed with eyeshadows, and it's only a handful of shadows, so, or palettes, so, that's it for the review, let's, I would recommend it, the palette's $40 by the way, and with shipping it was like $47, Lethal does take a little bit of time to get to me, because it's from Germany so it's a ways away but I did notice that the shipping was smoother than compared to my Beauty Bay palette. You get really good updates on where your palette is from Lethal. I did buy directly from the site. I didn't go to Camera Ready Cosmetics so I don't know the shipping on that website but my experience with customer service with Lethal was very good. I had zero issues getting my palette. So let's go ahead and go on to the three looks. I did two looks on their own with this palette and then I com did a combined look. The look I did today was also with the Lethal is Dead palette because again I wanted to compare the two palettes together, see if they work together. As I said already, I think these are good complementary palettes. I think they are definitely different. They stand on their own, but when combined together, I think they're really freaking pretty. So let's go ahead and get into those looks. And if you're tapping out now, thank you for so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what chat what palettes are on your wish list or some palettes that you maybe want to see me try. I try to be time once I get a palette I try to be really timely with the uploads I don't just like doing one looks and coming on camera and being like this is fantastic or this is awful like I really like trying all the shadows so if you want to see an in-depth review from other palettes please let me know now let's get into the next looks I'm going to do kind of a tail tail eye today we'll see how it goes so I'm going to go into the shade plutonian right here this deep purple and we are going to take a kind of angled brush and put it on the outside powdery. We're going to stamp this on the outside of the lid here. Kind of blend it a little bit into the crease, not too much. I just realized there was a step I wanted to do first. We'll get to it. And the eye primer I'm using today is the Kaleidos one. So now that I have two eye primers, I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between the two just again to get some comparisons, but so far, so good. This is blending out beautifully. 
little crazy as always I'll clean it up I'm going to go into a big fluffy blending brush and I'm going to go into the shade area 52 because I need to use this shadow in the palette I wish this shadow wasn't here but it is so we have to use it so I'm going to sweep this through the crease not gonna be heavy-handed with this just gonna blend it out and yeah you can tell like an insy bit that it's there not too much I don't know why Teresa included this shade it kind of feels like a waste maybe if I watch other people's looks with this palette I can kind of see how to use it more but for me we are just using this through the crease very light and soft kind of blending out the purple a little bit Next I'm going to go into the shade Specimen 3 down here. I did already swatch this palette so it's already looking a little rough, really powdery. I'm going to pick up a little bit more and I'm going to focus this on the inside part of my crease. Just going to kind of sweep it up a little bit. Something I did notice while I was swatching this palette is that some of the shadows like Specimen 3 and Pl Plutonian, they feel a little dry, which is very unusual. I did a video swatching all of my lethal shadows, and these, t not, yeah, I did a video swatching all of them, and one thing I can say about lethal is that their mattes are so incredibly pigmented not, and pigmented but they're also incredibly creamy so finding out that some of these shadows were dry was very confusing to me but yeah so next I'm going to go into the shade that I guess I should point it up for you go into the shade space trash and I'm going to pack this on my finger in the center of my lid Very pretty. Very, very pretty. So here is the look so far. I'm going to go into a dense brush and kind of a flat shader. And I'm going to go into the shade Specimen 3. And I'm going to kind of create the vibe that I did on top. I'm going to go back into Space Trash and I'm going to wet my brush for this. I'm going to use a very small pencil brush, kind of a little fat, flat. I think this is technically like a lip brush. So I'm going to spray this and I'm going to put this in the center right down here on the lower lash line. Yeah, this is pretty. To finish off this look, I'm going to use the Essence Extreme Lasting Eye Pencil in the shade Silky Nude and obtain my Epic Ink Liner from NYX. I'm going to clean up. We'll see how much cleaning up I have to do. Usually a wing will kind of, kind of help clean things up for me. So I'm going to do that, do mascara, and I will be right back. So here is the finished look. Really enjoy how this look turned out. It's very... It's, it feels more of like a summer look to me than fall just because we have kind of those bright colors but it's still pretty muted. So let me know what you think of this look down below and let's go ahead to the next look. I'm going to go a little off-road because normally when I do three looks with one palette I usually exclusively use the palette but I have a vision this morning of what I'm going to do so I'm going to go into the shade Space Duster right here and I'm going to pack this over my lid and into the crease so let me get my compact and did I use this shade the last time I did my look oh I definitely didn't that is pigmented okay my vision is definitely going to come to life with this look. 
and I'm still going to be using all lethal shadows. Okay, now that we have that pretty, pretty gray on the lid, I'm going to go into my other lethal singles, and I'm going to reach for the black, which I did a lethal swatching video, which will be coming eventually. I don't know exactly when, but I did swatch all of them, and I don't remember any of their names, so I'm just going into the black on this kind of flat packing brush and I'm going to just kind of put this on the outer corner to deepen up the gray. Besides the purple in this palette, I don't think this palette goes deep enough for my liking which is why I am incorporating the black. So I'm going to pack this on the outside corner of my eye. And I'm going to blend it into the gray space duster, but I want some more impact. I want the drama this morning, so I'm going in with this. So here is the grunge that I was aching for for this look. And now we're going to play with the silver, which I believe to be the star of this show, which is called TV Dinner. Lethal does have another, I'm going to go in with my finger with this, Lethal has their own single, oh wow, I can already tell that this silver does not compare to their original silver, it is pretty chunky, it is glittery, it is sparkly, it is a moment, oh my gosh, this is so pretty. I really like this, but the glitter got everywhere. It spread like wildfire. So normally I don't clean up my eyes until the end, but I got so much on the color lash line that we're going to clean it up now. And to clean up my eyes, I just use a primer. I use the Physicians Formula Soft Light Blurring Primer, and I've used this exclusively for cleaning up my eyes. I got this tip from Robert Welsh to just use a primer to clean up the lower lash line and everywhere you need to then just do it's just spreading the glitter. That's all it's doing. It's just but he recommends using a primer to clean up because you're not really removing makeup when you do it. I mean you are but just a little smoother and I should have used a glitter primer for this. Yeah. Because this is this has gotten everywhere. Yep. I did it was able to clean out the edges on the side, but all I did was move the glitter around. So for this palette, you need to use a glitter primer. Usually I try to do different variations with the shimmers to see do you need a glitter primer or not, but at least with TV dinner you need to use a glitter primer for sure. So for okay, definitely smudged out, we're gonna bring in some color. So I'm going to take the shade Venus Envy, this lime green, and I'm gonna smudge this on the lower lash line. I'm going to it's it's I'm going to kind of pack it a little bit on there just so I can get the color the way I want it. But I think this is going to do the job. Okay, just a little bit of green down the lower lash line. And I'm going to take a pretty small brush and I am going to go into the shade Pew Pew, this kind of baby pink. And like I've been saying in my Will I Buy video, so many palettes have a pop of pink in them lately, and this is no exception. So I'm using this as the inner corner highlight just to bring another shadow into this look and kind of do like a grungy watermelon vibe, I guess, with some silver. Yeah, just like this. On camera, it looks pretty close to my skin tone as my face is pretty red since I don't cover it up with like a hundred layers of foundation. But I think this is going to do the job that I want it to. 
So here is the look as it is. I have glitter everywhere on my face. So I am not happy about that at all. But I'm going to go, that's not what I want, that's not what I want, this is what I want. Do I dare do a wing today? I kind of don't want to do one just because I've already cleaned up the sides and I don't want to screw it up with a wing. So I think I'm just going to do a flat line across the upper part of my lid. I'm going to do mascara and then I will be right back. Here is the finished look. I enjoy how this look turned out. I'm still kind of upset at TV dinner for coming up that glitter for all the glitter bukkake. And when I was doing my mascara, my eyes started watering so it got even further down. But overall, I really enjoyed this look. I like that I brought in the deeper black from the from my singles to kind of deepen and smoky up this look. I didn't do a wing today. I know that's really crazy for me, but I'm trying not to do that. So let's go ahead and go on to the next look. So for this last look, I'm going to be using the Lethal Z palette as well as the Teresa, Teresa is Lethal palette. And so I'm going to start with the Teresa is Lethal palette and I'm going to dip into the bright bubblegum shade called Pew Pew. And I'm going to put this pretty high up. I did use a smidge of this in the last look, but I don't feel like I used it enough. So I'm using it here and I'm just doing a very soft dusting of it. Just keeping it very light. It is very close to my skin tone. I did notice that in the last look, so I don't know how much this is going to appear. Yeah, and looking at the camera, you can tell I barely put anything on here. So it is a little too close to my skin tone for my liking. I think for Teresa, since she has a fairer skin tone, this looks a little bit brighter on her and more pink. This just looks like my skin tone and I don't want to build this up too much. Just a nice little dusting of it. Just working it above my brow bone. You can't really see this. Yeah, you, you, you can't see this. So we're just going to move on to the next shade, which is coming from the Lethal is Dead palette, which I'm going to go into the shade The Final Girl right here, and I'm going to put that a little bit lower on the lash line. Not on the lash line, but in the crease. Just going to try to build up that other shade a little bit more. And the reason why I'm doing a combo of this look, I probably said it in my review part, but it's just that there was a lot of like, these palettes look really similar, which is part of the reason why I bought this second palette because I want to know how similar were they truly to each other. And I do have, uh, I dyed my hair this morning and I keep the my bangs green and the rest of my hair black and so the green gets all over my face and I do my best to scrub it off but sometimes just sometimes it doesn't work out but I'm going to do foundation and everything after this since it is a Saturday to help cover it up but I think I think this is pretty good I'm not trying too terribly hard right now just trying to build up something a little bit Next, I'm going to stick with the Lethal is Dead palette and going to go into the shade Vengeful Spirit. And I'm going to focus this. This is me, or I just noticed that these shadows have aren't as powdery as I remember. This one, you're getting a little bit of kick up in the pan, but not too much. So I'm going to focus this on the outside part of my crease. We are going to go back into the other palette but I'm kind of just doing a nice base of the shadow first. Here we go, back into the Teresa is Lethal palette, and I'm going to go into the shade Plutonian to build up the outer crease more. I can't decide if these shadows are really powder or really not. There's not a lot of kick up in this pan for Plutonium, so I'm going to just kind of focus this on the very outside part of my lid. I'm going to go into the shade Hive Mind here 
and I'm going to flip over the brush and I'm going to focus this on the center of my lid. This is my first time using this shadow and something like this going back and forth back and forth with this palette and I'm going to go in the shade Agent Evil and I'm going to put this on the inside portion of my lid right about here it is a different shade compared to the other one but it kind of has that pinky undertone so I thought it fit well with this look and this is going to be a really pretty inner corner highlight so once I am done packing this on and do the rest of my makeup I think I will also use this as like the inner corner highlight portion of this look but just going over it so here is the look as we have it right now I am enjoying it it's a nice purpley pinky moment so I am going to do the rest of my makeup and I will be right back all right base makeup is done I kind of helped myself I did a wing I know I know I know I know so I'm going to go I'm I really want to try to make pew pew work I really do so I'm going to try it again on the lower lash line it's let's just try to see if we can make something pop real quick let's let's just see and I do have some smudging of old eyeliner down there this is not going to do anything this is doing absolutely nothing we're going to have to go back into the other palette this is it's such a beautiful shade in the pan but it does not show up on my eyes at all it just looks a little a, a little like nothing so back to lethal is dead i just want to do dark i just want to go dark let's go into vengeful spirit now and pretty much put this on top of pew pew because don't know what else i'm gonna do with it so we're gonna do this just a little something this smudging brush that's cute that's cute do i want to do anything else on the lower lash line i'm kind of happy with where it is right now honestly I think doing pew pew underneath vengeful spirit underneath vengeful spirit was a good idea. So I'm taking the brush I used up above my lid and I'm just kind of sm smoothing everything out. Just doing a little something like this, and I think this is where we're gonna leave the eye look. I kind of wanted to bring in plutonium a little bit, but I don't think we need to. I think it's fine just the way it is right now. So here is the eye look. I'm going to do mascara off camera like I always do. I bought a lash primer, mostly out of curiosity. I, I just wanted to see it. So I got the CoverGirl Lash Blast Amplify Primer. And I'm going to use it as my Lash my lash Idol Liner from Lancome. Let's see if I could just do this on camera. Because I can show you the look. So this is a plastic bristle brush. And I'm just sweeping this through my lashes. When I tried this with my Essence Lash Princess. This did absolutely nothing. But when I used it with the Tarte Mascara, I noticed such a huge difference with the primer underneath it. So I really like it with that mascara. So we'll see if it can change up the Lancome Mascara. But I'm just kind of putting this everywhere. I got black on this. Okay. So I'm going to let that sit for a little bit. It is pretty white, but it does, it's, yeah, it's not like stark, stark white, but it, it definitely is a little bright. I have stopped doing mascara on my lower lash line because I've noticed that when I do it, my eyes get so, so watery. So I have been pushing back on that, but I'm trying to let this settle down for a couple seconds, but let's talk about the look real quick. I love how it turned out on the lid. The lower lash line got messy. It always does. Always gets a little messy. But I really like how it looks on top. I think all the shadows blended well together. I really like the metallics. I feel like with Hive Mine, we did not need to use a glitter glue with that shadow. So maybe it was just TV Dinner, the one that you have to use a 
glitter primer with but all right so here is the finished look as it is really enjoying how this look turned out it might be my favorite look no i really love thursday's look with tv dinner despite the glitter everywhere i really like how this look but this look is soft you have some pinks you have some purples I enjoyed this and I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Give it a like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts on this palette. Do you think it's worth picking up? Is this something you can skip? Or I know it's probably not available anymore. I'm going to double check first. But I like it. I like this palette. I like the end result. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video and as always, have joy.